it's official. We now know the exact location and timing of the Yellowstone supervolcano's next eruption, and it's called a supervolcano for a reason. It will be thousands of times more powerful than a typical volcanic eruption. When this happens, the planet will face massive disasters. Earthquakes, tons of magma flows, ashen clouds that will block out the sun. The sky will be gray for a long time. We will have a shortage of food because of the lack of sunlight. Planes won't be able to fly. Some species of animals and trees may disappear. One disaster will follow another, like falling dominoes, one by one. Terrible times await Earth and… Okay, stop. It's clear we got it. But when will all this happen? Don't worry, you won't be left without an answer. When ordinary volcanoes erupt, it's always a disaster, but only for those places that are located near the epicenter. Multiply the damage from an ordinary volcano by thousands and you'll get a supervolcano eruption. Yellowstone is one of the largest volcanic systems in the world. It's erupted three times in the last 2.1 million years. The last time was 640,000 years ago. The ash covered an area comparable to about half of the United States. Fortunately, there were no people there, but nature got hurt. A similar eruption of a similar supervolcano occurred about 74,000 years ago. It was the Toba supervolcano in Indonesia that caused an apocalypse the human race barely managed to survive. According to some theories, only a few thousand people stayed alive at the time during the volcanic winter, but it's not confirmed. Since Yellowstone is a volcanic system located in a vast national park, it was important for scientists to find out exactly where the first spark would come from. They found out that Yellowstone's magma doesn't accumulate in one place, but hides in several separate underground reservoirs. The reservoir in the northeast of Yellowstone, next to a beautiful place called Sour Creek Dome, is the riskiest. Here, the red-hot magma comes into contact with the hot rocks of the mantle, which are located deep in the ground. Their high temperature keeps the magma in a liquid state. Imagine that you put a pot of hot milk on the stove. Nothing cools down but only gets hotter, so the milk may soon begin to rise and flow out of the pan. The same thing is happening with the magma under Sour Creek Dome. Magma doesn't cool down there, and at some point, it may start to come out. It'll be like a broken pipe from which a fountain of boiling water gushes. But how did scientists find out? The magma reservoirs are located at a depth of about 6 miles, and this whole area is incredibly hot. They used a special method called magnetotellurics. So, Earth's rotating core creates a magnetic field that surrounds our planet. Magma flows around the core, and it contains many magnetic minerals that also create magnetic fields. Scientists use special instruments that sense those fields emanating from the magma, like a metal detector senses lost jewelry on the beach. Using magnetotellurics, they scanned Yellowstone and discovered four large magma reservoirs. Three of them emitted powerful electromagnetic waves, and in the fourth, which is in the northeast, they recorded a much stronger signal from the magnetic field. This is where the eruption is supposed to occur. But fortunately, it won't happen soon. Perhaps in tens of thousands of years, perhaps in hundreds. Phew, you can relax. No volcanic apocalypse is coming soon. But how do scientists know when this magma will start to erupt? Magma doesn't have a timer, and the volcano doesn't wake up with an alarm clock. So, magma flows inside the pores of solid rock. It resembles a dishwashing sponge with lots of small holes through which water passes. Magma penetrates these pores and fills them. For magma to start erupting outward, it must fill at least 40% of these pores. About 20% of them are filled now. But these hot rocks continue to heat the magma and keep it liquid, so it can flow between the pores. At some point, it will connect with other pools of the liquid magma and become a large stream that will rise to the top. How can we prevent this from happening? It seems that the solution here is to cool the balsam rocks, but it's impossible to do so. They are several miles deep, they are incandescent, and there are too many of them. 
And in any case, trying to cool a part of the Earth's core sounds like a very bad idea. All we can do is accept that nature has its own plans. If the eruption occurs in tens or hundreds of thousands of years, then perhaps humanity will find a way to solve this problem. If not, then we should prepare for the consequences. A huge global catastrophe starts with a massive, large-scale explosion. The erupting magma produces a gigantic amount of ash. A powerful burst of energy collapses the Earth's crust over the magma reservoir. This leads to the formation of a giant caldera. You've probably seen a huge crater in a volcano. So, this is the caldera. The natural disaster is so loud it deafens everyone who is nearby. The blast wave rises ash and pumice stone at a speed exceeding the speed of sound. Volcanic materials reach incredibly high altitudes in minutes. Then, this pillar of ash spreads and plunges a huge territory into darkness. The incandescent particles in the lower part fall under their own weight and heat the air around them. It's almost impossible to breathe. The red-hot pieces of pumice stone and ash set fire to the surroundings. All this hot mass turns into pyroclastic flows that destroy and burn everything in their path. Forests, houses, roads, everything turns into coal. No planes can fly there. Tiny particles can penetrate engines. Besides, it's impossible to see through such a dark gray hot cloud. It's also dangerous to drive cars. Volcanic particles can burn tires. Luckily, thanks to seismic technologies, people have learned in advance about the eruption, so everybody has evacuated. The column of ash that has reached the edge of space continues to expand in different directions. The wind helps the volcanic dust expand. A giant umbrella-like cloud appears over the territory of Yellowstone. It's getting wider and wider and plunges a huge area into hot darkness. During the first 24 hours, ash falls on most of the United States and parts of Canada. It knocks out power lines, pollutes bodies of water, and destroys crops. Then, the rains begin. The water mixes with the ash and falls to the ground in the form of gray mud. And don't forget, it's also poisonous. The ash contains mercury, arsenic, and lead in large quantities. Such toxic masses poison rivers, lakes, land, and air. All this time, the volcano continues to erupt. The outbursts of magma, ash, and pumice can last for several weeks or even a month. And this is just the beginning. The ash soon begins to settle, but the sulfur dioxide released during the eruption spreads all over the atmosphere. This gas mixes with the atmospheric water vapor and forms an aerosol consisting of small particles. All this covers the planet like a veil. This cap makes it difficult for the sun's rays to pass through, which means it lowers the temperature of the Earth's surface. These events cause a sharp cooling of several degrees in the world. Farmers lose a huge amount of their crops. Food prices rise and economies collapse there might be a famine all over the planet. Human civilization can plunge into chaos. In a few years, the temperature will start rising, but it will take at least a couple of decades to return to previous standards. What will become of humanity by that time? Of course, we will survive, but we'll have to rebuild our civilization. But don't be afraid. If nothing depends on us, let's just enjoy every day of life. Be grateful and help each other. Supporting and caring for each other even during the volcanic winter is a guarantee that humanity will survive. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.